Hello viewers, welcome back to Daily Retro. Today we're doing a small video on the Black Country Games Fair, which was a few days back. So I really enjoyed this event. It was the second time that Dana and Stu had run it. I uh, really enjoyed it and picked up some interesting items. So just want to give a shout out first to all the people I saw there. Absolutely great community as always. Um, in particular, uh, Claire, the repair bear. Um, it's good to see that her business is still doing very well and she's doing some very impressive mods and I hope she sold a fair bit. Um, it's quite a small fair so I'm sort of, I was sort of done within about an hour and a half, two hours even after chatting to loads of people but that's part of the fun of the event um, and it was only £2 entry so you, it's really, you can't have any excuse not to go to this event. So again, if you, there's going to be two next year I believe Dana has said um, so I would highly recommend getting along to one if you've not been to one before. So we're going to flash up some some footage of the event just as I talk. Um, but I was really, really impressed by the stock quality again. So there was a good amount of stalls and not just stalls selling rubbish like you see at a lot of um, bigger events, actual quality stock. So the stalls I was particularly impressed by were um, Eddie's, so uh, um, Roller X Core even. And he was having help from Dylan, uh, uh, Hyper Trigger X. And again, it's really nice to see those guys and chat to them. Um, got a lot in common with those guys and got a lot of time for them. Um, but yeah, they had a big stall. And I sort of asked Eddie why, because he's already bought a house um, from the money he used from selling previously. Um, so that was that's cool to learn about that. Um, but he actually wants to convert his PAL collection to a Japanese collection. Which is quite cool to see. So he's selling off a lot of his um, power stuff. So there was an awful lot in, on his stall. Um, also on the next, the first pickup was actually from a guy called Darren. Um, a lot of people seem to know who he was. Um, I I can't say I recognise him, but he was on the stall next to Two T's, and he was able to sort me out with a game I've been looking for for quite a long time in good condition and at a good price. So I struggled to find this game for less than £30 um, at, at sort of um, bigger markets. So that is Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. So this is a PSP game, quite a common PSP game, that was then ported to PS2 rather than the other way around, which is the more common way to do it, obviously. Um, so not a graphically impressive Ratchet and Clank by any means but still a good story. Um, I've never actually completed it, so I definitely wanted to pick it up. Um, but on eBay, these go for between 30 and 50 pounds um, in good condition. And this was in exceptional condition. Uh, the disc looks like it's maybe been used a couple of times and that's it. No scratches really. Um, and the manual's in very nice condition as well. Um, but that was 20 pounds. Um, and Darren did let me inspect it thoroughly before I bought it um, so that was nice to see that level of confidence um, but yeah really really chuffed with that pickup and for the sake of the £2 entry it was worth it just to pick up that game to be honest um, it was only a 50 minute drive for me from Cheltenham to actually go to the fair um, so there's only one more pickup so I had quite a small list at the moment I just haven't had time to sort of populate it slash haven't had enough time in the games room to sort of go through my backlog at the moment to sort of realize yeah I need to buy some more games it's been quite a slow process this year but anyway uh, the next pickup was something that just caught my eye and this was at the magazine stall right at the start and this is the PlayStation mag for the release of Colin McRae 2 on the PS1 um, and this actually covers the PlayStation 2 launch event as well in this in this magazine and this is dated April 2000, so 23 and a half years ago now, which is seems crazy. Um, and yeah, it was just a massive hit of nostalgia going through that, and that was only £3, so I really couldn't say no to that. That's less than what it cost brand new when it came out, so definite. I was always going to pick that up and just store it with the rest of my rally collection. And then something else is... Something else I've not really bought, so going back to Claire, the repair bear, she was giving out her 3D printed repair bears. Um, so these are really cool to see, I know she's had a few issues with her 3D printer, but she's since rectified it because 
she's a very clever lady um, and she's done a lot of work for people recently that I've been absolutely amazed by um, doing work on Neo Geo AESs and and Commodores and even CRT monitors which I have utmost respect for because that's something I would never touch with a barge pole so respect to her for doing all that um, and I hope you got some new business obviously out of the event um, so I'll talk about a, a bit more of the event so it's it's obviously the second running of, of it um, I felt it ran a lot more smoothly this time so Dana sort of um, let people in to sort of browse but not buy including myself and a few other YouTubers beforehand which was really cool to see um, just so we could take some video which obviously you'll be seeing in this video and it was just nice to see that everyone was very organized compared to the previous time um, they put out notices to bring cash um, just because you can use card in the building but they didn't have a terribly good uh, roof for sort of getting good signal uh, actually connecting to the 4G so there was issues with pay paying with card it just took a few attempts or a little while to actually actually get a pro transaction processed um, so I, I did bring some cash and it made the day a whole lot easier but it was nice that those communications went out beforehand um, so everyone was nice and prepared and no one sort of was surprised by the issues if that makes sense but again I've done a full review video on this event on when it first ran um, that was back in early spring I think it was this year um, so I'll link that down in the description um, but yeah I saw some great people there um, I even got uh, Retro Ed and Scotty Marathon Gamer to come with me to Vintage Gamer afterwards just because it was only a 10 minute drive and we both all three of us weren't exactly local to the area obviously Eddie and Scotty even more so they're sort of a 3 hour drive back to Essex um, so I thought you come all this way it's worth going to Vintage Gamer as well after the market because obviously the market is very good um, but it obviously is is quite small so they were sort of done within an hour and a half two hours as well so it was nice to go and show them one of the best retro game shops in the area as well so um, yeah that's it really it's just a short video just to sort of go over that event um, and I, I look forward to going to more events soon I've actually booked to go to Play Expo on the Saturday in Blackpool in October so I'm really looking forward to going to that um, that's just the daddy daddy day out so again I'm going to be really looking forward to that and hope to see lots of you there um, feel, feel free to come and say hello if you've not said hello to me before um, but without further ado that's it for this video if you've enjoyed don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you very soon for another video Cheers.